Hello guys, this is Dr. Bass from the Industrial From, and uh, today I'm working on uh, some uh, great project, which is uh, water cooling for a hot motor. Uh, yes, I finally decided to try that um, because uh, I have a great powerful electric bike, but uh, the problem is that a um, uh, few minutes after I go wide open throttle with those, uh, I have some uh, loss, uh, loss of power because the winding uh, resistance is increasing due to the, due to the temperature. So uh, I want to uh, override that and uh, to correct that by uh, water cooling instead of air cooling. Uh, I wanted to try uh, a lot of time these with the X5 motor and now with uh, the new uh, X53, uh, sorry, 5403 hub motor, the new larger um, motor, uh, I wanted to try that. So uh, let me show you um, what I'm working on. Okay, so you can see here, this is the stator uh, of the motor. Uh, I just protected the winding with uh, some tape here. And uh, by the way, you will see the grid color I, ha I, I chose uh, for the side cover. You see, this is a color shift effect from Rust-Oleum. Uh, it blew, uh, it uh, shift from blue to uh, purple to uh, red and uh, brown. So this is great. And you see, these holes are for air cooling, but I want to try both. So <laughs> why not? <laughs> but uh, well, I will protect uh, with uh, some grid here to avoid some uh, dust and particles to uh, jam between the magnets and the stator. So you see here, this is the stator and the gray color effect. Okay, so let's uh, go back to the water cooling. So here, this is what I'm trying. Um, this is a lot complicated, more complicated than I uh, I thought, but uh, I think it's worth. I will explain you the design. So you see here, this is some path that I made. Uh, I actually use two plates in sandwich on the stator. I have these kind of plate here, so one on one side and the other side. So you have the OEM uh, brace for the motor. And between those, I just added some uh, aluminum to make some water path. So here is how the water will circulate into it. I have some mark, okay, right here. So this is where the the, the, the wires, hull sensors, and um, also on the other side, the, the phase wires will uh, will be okay. So the liquid will enter here through the axle. I will explain later how I uh, in introduce the liquid through the axle. So the liquid goes here. I will have a separator here. So it will just circulate around that. It will call all this side. And then you can see here the hole. It will go straight into, you see here, straight into this first section goes all around and you see I have some little path right under this brace so the liquid will goes here like that go over that side you see I have some little pockets here so the liquid will goes right here like that under here on the top bottom and then through the hole here will goes on the other side right here and we'll do the same so this element part will go here so the liquid will go right here and then exit right here I have a 45 degree angle so I have uh, some tubing that I need to finish goes into this hole and finally go back here and we'll exit through the axle so now I know you all wonder why, uh, how uh, I will use the axle with the water circulation and uh, everything. So I have the machine axle here. So this is the side for the liquid cooling where the sprocket har, uh, so the free wheel, sorry. And then this is the side for the wires. So you see, I used some um, antenna <laughs> because these tubes are really thin you see the thickness but they are still strong for the pressure 
I will use probably uh, around uh, 10 to 15 psi with the pump so these are bra uh, brass tubes that I glued and soldered because they can be soldered so it will just go like here okay so the liquid will, will go here here will connect to the tubing here and then will exit and goes out yeah, right here so I have to solder some extension right here right after I will in, uh, introduce the, the not introduce but uh, put uh, put back the side cover here because I cannot make the extension while I want to enter the, the side cover so that's uh, the process so I uh, I built some uh, aluminum parts like those and these parts are um, you know uh, I could have uh, done some uh, CNC machining, but it's uh, expensive, so uh, <laughs> I used the <laughs> cheaper way. <laughs> so I just uh, used the bandsaw, uh, and uh, and then I just sent those rings. So these rings will go. I will just show you. So I will just glue these rings that way. Okay, so that will seal. The ring where the, the liquid circulates. So all these parts are glued with uh, the DP420 uh, from Scotchweld, which is a really uh, strong epoxy. I uh, have made some video uh, to show uh, how strong it can be, and it uh, can withstand a pretty high temperature and a lot of chemical par uh, liquid, uh, just like the liquid I will use, which is the 50/50 mix uh, of uh, Preston. Um, I know that some guys uh, talked about uh, some, some uh, galvanic uh, corrosion problem and I know that I might have some problem uh, uh, in, in the next month with uh, the brass and the aluminum but I don't have choice because these are the only tubes I found that are so thin so I will not have a direct interface between that and this one I will have rubber tube but I know that the liquid is conducting, so well, I will just hope. So um, I expect to have a uh, temperature uh, when I uh, drive it to 10 kilowatt. I expect to have uh, only uh, temperature like uh, 50 degree instead of 150. So uh, uh, I think it will be uh, great. But this is just the ex the expectation. So uh, we'll see. And this is the pump I will use. Uh, it can go up to 50 psi. And uh, I think it's 100 and uh, uh, 1,000 and 1,200 uh, liter per hour, but I will not have this uh, flow uh, since I'm limited by the size of these tubes. But this is the the maximum room I have for the axle and the bearing. But I don't want to make a new axle because it's more complicated than just doing these. And the axle have proven to be uh, strong enough for all the needs I have. For uh, up to 20 kilowatts, so I uh, I think I will have not have any problem with with this. So this is the pump and the radiator. This radiator is uh, made for a three 120 millimeter uh, fan for computer water cooling. So uh, I installed some fitting here, and these are three eighth of an inch size. So I try to maximize the size of the the, 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 the tubes until I go right here. I know this is uh, the limiting part, but with the pressure the pump can do, uh, I think it will be, uh, uh, it will have a uh, sufficient uh, flow to, uh, to uh, water cool the motor uh, with uh, great efficiency. So I will post result later and I will finish that. I have some parts to glue and just give you a last look. Of these parts you see I applied epoxy on all these parts and they are really 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 strong and uh, at up to 120 degree uh, I have uh, still a quarter of the shear string of the of this uh, epoxy uh, compared to ambient temperature which is still really high so Thumbs up for that, I hope that uh, it will work, so uh, I will keep you updated on that. Thank you all!